All right, so without further ado, um, thanks again for joining. And uh, today we'll be talking about how to connect, integrate, and interact with blockchain technology. So just five seconds about us. Um, you know, we, we see some of the registrants and there are a lot of um, familiar faces. Uh, there, there's a couple of new folks in here. So just for those that haven't heard about Envision Blockchain yet, if I could just take five seconds, kind of explain a little bit about us. Um, so we are a Microsoft partner. And we're really focused in blockchain agnostic solutions. And uh, we have a vision and mission to increase blockchain adoption. Um, and, and we believe that that's gonna be the catalyst which is gonna drive organizational transformation um, in, this, in this current era that we're living in right now. So there's IoT, there's AI and blockchain. And when you combine all those together, this is what's, what's being called as the fourth industrial revolution. Um, so we're uh, uniquely positioned right there. Um, so just just to kind of flash really quickly about some of our offer some some of our offerings and how we help out clients. Uh, when you take a look at your journey in blockchain, you know adoption or implementation or how you're using it, uh, there's there's really these major milestones. So you could be at the beginning in an educational type of phase. You could be looking at, uh, you know, shortlisting certain use cases, uh, like, hey, I know that blockchain is probably going to be important for me to look at. Um, I have a lot of business processes. I have a lot of ways that the company makes revenue. How can we fit blockchain into this process? And that's where the use case workshops come in. Uh, the Immersion Labs, which you see right there, is this really educational blockchain 101 guided tour showing you different smart contracts, um, you know, and we're going to get to what a smart contract is in the next couple of slides. Um, maybe you're already understanding what the use case is. You've already investigated it. Um, and now you've shortlisted that and now you need to develop out a solution and add that to some of your business processes. That's where the solution deployments are really going to come into play. And we can help out from developing out a proof of concept all the way out to a production level environment. Um, so uh, with regards to post go live support, we provide training and managed services, helping manage and support the blockchain solution that's implemented. Um, system integration is something that we're gonna focus on uh, very heavily during this webinar because when you're dealing with blockchain technology, it's like a database in a way. So um, naturally what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be integrating with some of your existing LOB apps or line of business applications, uh, whether it's IoT devices or uh, AI, or maybe we're, we're gonna be touching upon what are the other um, you know, current legacy systems as, as they like to call it, ERP systems, CRM systems, et cetera. So we integrate with that. We'll explain more about that and also big data reporting. Um, just flashing this really quickly, some of the industry accreditation that Envision Blockchain has, as, as we mentioned earlier, that we are blockchain framework agnostic. Um, we're not gonna get into what the differences between different blockchain networks are, but there's benefits and there's, there's pros and cons for all the different blockchains out there from the private blockchains to the, um, uh, to, to the public ones, right? But we are members of the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance uh, we're certified by the Linux Foundation, which is the uh, organization that hosts the Hyperledger projects, certified blockchain for business there. We're also uh, Corda blockchain certified and service providers and partners for the Corda organization. Uh, we're also Microsoft certified uh, professionals all the way from app development, data analytics, uh, developing solutions, and also with IoT devices. So let's let's kind of get into let's get into the presentation a little bit and and let's and let's discuss uh, first before we get into this let's discuss what is blockchain and uh, you know this topic you can do tons of reading on you can um, you can go ahead and uh, you know spend all day immersing yourself but really simply put it's a distributed ledger there's nodes in the network that hold a copy of the ledger. Ultimately, the word blockchain is this chain of historical records that's linked together and it's programmed with something that's called smart contracts and smart contracts is something that we'll be talking a lot about today. Um, so simply put, blockchain is a shared and immutable ledger that records transactions. As transactions happen in your business, it holds these and it encapsulates that into a block. 
and a lot of blocks have this uh, seal time, for example. So certain, you know, certain transaction happen, it gets trapped in a block, the next block forms, transaction happened, that block closes, another block opens up, transaction happen, it closes, and they're all linked together, hence the chain. And when we take a look at from a holistic view, what it really provides is that there's values with using blockchain uh, with your solutions. When you implement blockchain, you should be able to, on the very basic level, be able to have this immutability of data, which means that the data coming in cannot be changed. This is what they mean that it's, uh, you know, super secure, um, you know, that, that the data would you want to run your business off of, um, you know, you can include that in many different revenue models, but this is this immutable data that cannot be changed. Transparency means that anyone in that network, as long as they're given the right permissions, they can see all of this information. And again, because it's immutable data, we're now operating in this trustless fashion where this data is proven, it's governed by the rules and the code within the smart contract. We'll explain what that means in a second. And it's obviously happening in real time. So now you have these real time workflows that when certain events trigger, they cause a new state to change. And, and again, if this is your first time hearing about blockchain, we're gonna discuss this and we're gonna provide demos. So um, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll get into all that. Uh, but at the very top level, all these values that we just discussed, they provide a new level of trust between business partners where the business partners that are part of your business network now can agree on this smart contract. They can agree on the rules of this blockchain network that they decide to participate in. Okay. So again, just to give you a little bit more of a visual representation about what is a blockchain, um, blockchains are distributed ledgers. Again, so there's different nodes in the network and the nodes in the network, they provide this, uh, you know, they, they, they provide this, uh, chain of blocks and, and, and they're, all, they're all getting copies of this transaction metadata at the same time. Um, at, the very, uh, you know, at the very simplistic uh, data structure, if you will, they at least have a timestamp when something happened and a block reference so that you can reference this block, you can reference the previous blocks. Um, and and, and this, this is all hashed metadata and we're gonna give you some examples of what hashed means uh, but hashing is a form of, of, of encryption ultimately. Um, so again, within the blocks that you see right here, we have this transaction metadata. Again, whatever information is within the smart contract, again, we keep talking about smart contract, but just keep this in the back of your mind, that this transaction metadata, again, is captured within a block. So this is a kind of like a picture explaining what the block could look like, and it's linked to all the other blocks in the blockchain. Um, and this is again showing you a different representation of what a blockchain network would look like. So consider each one of these computer stations a different node or a different business partner or, you know, a different participant within your network. And, and uh, we're not going to get into the concept of consensus, but essentially what happens is when a transaction happens, the nodes have to agree, the participants have to agree, or in this picture, this, these computers have to agree that the transaction is valid and nothing's been tampered with and the code is what the code is. And when that consensus algorithm hits and, and it, it can verify that the transaction is the right transaction, it writes the ledger. And again, everyone in that network has a copy of that, um, has a copy of that ledger. So again, that you could see as many blocks that form, all the blocks are now um, transparent and they're all written to all the different participants of the network. So here's where we start to talk a little bit about what a smart contract is. So you're gonna hear me talk about smart contract applications pretty frequently. Um, essentially, when we talk about smart contracts, we can just keep it simple. We're talking about blockchain applications. So an application, you know, an app that runs on a blockchain network is essentially called a smart contract. 
uh, there's there's different components, right? When we talk about the full stack, you you might have heard someone within your organization, you know, if you're in the IT side, this is a common term. If you're on the business side, you may or may not have heard of full stack, but the full stack would refer to the different layers of the architecture. So there's uh, you know there's there's the 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 UI, which is like the web part where we interact. We're going to showcase what all this is. But essentially, the smart contract is the rules of which the application is going to be running in. So let's break down what a smart contract is just one step further, right? So how do you interact with the blockchain application? So this first picture is a smart contract. We just give you a little snippet of the code. Um, so, you know, when you think of a smart con oh, sorry, when you think of a contract, right, the first thing that comes, at least to my mind, is like a contractual agreement, like a legal agreement, right? So, so when you think about what that means, it's that there's, um, you know, business logic behind it. If you do this, then I'll do this and you'll receive payment or I'll do this or something like that, right? So essentially, this smart contract is your business logic codified and then written to the blockchain ledger. So you can't change the smart contract of course, you can you know, deploy another smart contract, but that's another conversation. But essentially, the rules of the smart contract, it's written to the blockchain, and this is our language of how we're going to transact. Okay, so, so we have the smart contract, we develop the smart contract, it's then deployed to the blockchain network, and then you transact in it. We're going to showcase in this, in this presentation, we're going to showcase a... Uh, um, a smart contract for a, a supply chain for um, uh, taking coffee beans from one location, cultivating it, et cetera, and shipping it to another one. So transaction doesn't necessarily have to be, uh, you know, like when, when, when we think about, um, we think about cryptocurrency, right? Do you think about transactions? We talk about money, right? I have, I have some money value and I'm transferring it to someone else, to their wallet, to their, to their bank account, et cetera. So what we're gonna be looking at is really non-financial use cases of blockchain for this particular case. So transactions could be uh, literally, I'm transferring responsibility for, for, for this to someone else. Or maybe I have an IoT sensor that's on a truck that's always gonna be sensing the temperature every five minutes. And when it reads that temperature and then writes that information, that's also a transaction, okay? so once. Once that information is then written to the blockchain, all members of this uh, uh, business network, they all have a copy of that transaction metadata. Okay, again, uh, we breeze through this kind of quick blockchain 101. Um, if you go to our website, www.envisionblockchain.com, you go to our Azure Microsoft uh, Marketplace offers, we offer a dedicated uh, blockchain 101. This is what we call the enterprise blockchain immersion, where we take these concepts and, and we, we go further into what consensus algorithms are, what the different blockchains are, pros and cons, et cetera. So this is just a quick little snippet of what a session like that would, would look like. Um, but now that we understand a little bit about what a blockchain is, what a network is, how it's, how it's made up, and what a smart contract is, you know, the number one question that we're hearing from all of our customers and anyone that we talk to when we talk about blockchain is we're essentially talking about how can blockchain streamline business processes. And this is, this is a really interesting concept because over the past year, uh, the world has experienced a rapid growing trend of business leaders that are looking into blockchain. And they could be looking into blockchain from really quick, uh, you know, hey, I just wanna read a couple news articles about it, all the way through, hey, I wanna actually, you know, take some, take some budget and I wanna invest into a solution. So I need to develop a proof of concept um, or, or, or maybe I wanna do a use case assessment. But along those lines, right, you need to understand where it is that you know the business value out of blockchain technology is really is really going to come in you know so it's important not just to understand uh the blockchain technology but what's more important is if you take a step back 
and let's take a look at business processes and, and what business processes actually mean. So in a previous presentation, we had discussed the value chain. And, and, and the value chain, it's not a new concept by any means. The value chain is, is originally a concept that Michael Porter um, uh, kind of brought to the attention of the world. And uh, he talked about basically that uh, the value chain exists in every organization. Um, and it consists of two major categories, uh, primary activities and supporting activities. Okay, so when, when I'm gonna explain these to you, the only thing I want you to do is think of this as a quick little assessment. Um, think about where it is that you specifically sit within your organization and then we're gonna start to understand where these different processes live, right? So at the very top level, we have these supporting activities. We have the firm and in, firm infrastructure. This is where we discuss the line management, the administrative handling, financial management systems, et cetera. We have human resource management. We have recruiting staff. We have training the staff. We have making compensations and retaining the staff. Um, we also have the technology development. This is where you're gonna find a lot of IT. Again, IT, as we've seen in a lot of organizations, they're really seemed as a support function, right? We have business processes and IT needs to be able to support it. Um, sometimes IT uh, departments are seen as, 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 you know, as kind of an expense, really. But when, when, uh, when you can merge business and IT together, that's where we're gonna really be able to see a lot of support. Okay, so that's, that's on the technology development. Um, and then we also have procurement, right? We have suppliers, we have agreements, we have services, we have pricing, et cetera. Um, so that's the supporting activities. When we get to the primary activities, we have inbound logistics. Uh, how are you taking supplies in from another organization? Or maybe how are you taking supplies in from your current organization? Um, there's also production. Once you have your supplies in, how are you actually going to be uh, you know, putting them together? How are you manufacturing this? How are you building it? How are you, you know, how are you putting your service together? Um, you also have outbound logistics, okay? So uh, we now not only have the inbound, we're not just making it, but we're also sending it out. And then when we're sending it out, you know, you obviously need the marketing and sales involved. Those are the ones that usually make the first contact with the customer. This is the one that, that, that really, you know, helps you get seen. Um, and then you have the services. This is really after you provided your service, um, after you provided whatever it is that your business does to make revenue, then you need to be able to support it on, on, some, on some end. Right? So um, when, when we go through this organizational assessment of your different value chains, we're starting to now understand, you know, kind of compartmentalize where you are, what the business is, and then how it makes sense that a new technology can kind of get everything all together on the same page. Um, and, and think about this for, for just one second, try to keep this in your mind, because when, when we perform, when, when Envision specifically, when we perform our use case assessments, we have a, a very robust, you know, it, it, it can go, you know, it can go as far as, you know, 50 questionnaire use case assessment. Um, you know, it, it, it gets in depth and it covers a lot of different uh, points all across what, what's kind of needed to kind of come up with the requirements, both functional and technical. And, um, you know, this is what customers really like about the use case assessments is because uh, when you have this new type of emerging technology, you think about, well, where does it fit and how does it fit and who should be involved and where do we get it in? And you can come to the table with maybe a hundred of ideas, but it's really important to take those ideas and shortlist them into something that makes sense uh, from, from the first go ahead. So uh, if I can focus on four major points that really make sense for this presentation is the use case assessment. And some of the points that we like to discuss are data sources. So again, this is really important when we talk about blockchain, remember the values, it has this immutable data. Once something goes into the blockchain, it can't be rewritten. 
So it's important that we look at our data sources. We call them the golden sources, right? So where are the data coming from? And, and that's important because when we start to talk about IoT devices, where we start to talk about different, you know, legacy systems, inventory management systems, or, you know, uh, supplier systems, then, you know, you want to understand where the data is coming from and make sure that it's a, you know, credible data source. Uh, technology 360 is where we take a look at all the technology that's available because maybe blockchain isn't the best fit for your use case. Maybe it is. Maybe that there's other technology that you could be using um, or maybe that there's ways that you can use your current systems a little bit better. So we call that a 360 because not everything needs to go forward with blockchain technology uh, as much as we would like it to. Uh, value streams, which is important because value streams is what we just basically discussed, right? Um, the business has so many different areas where business value is being held up at. So, you know, it's, poor, it's important to understand where are the value streams coming from and legacy systems is where we're going to focus on for, for the majority of the rest of the presentation. So some of the legacy systems, right, they, they don't necessarily need to be old to be considered legacy systems, but it's what you currently are using. So when we take a look at some examples of legacy systems, uh, just to point the picture, we have different systems, right? Everything from enterprise management systems and financial management systems, facilities and equipment management systems, could also be inventory systems and employee management systems, all the way through, right? We're not gonna read every single one and explain what that is, because I'm sure that you already know what they are or you're familiar with it. But just to paint a better picture, if we take a look at all the different uh, legacy systems, now when we merge all the pictures together, now you could see which of these systems are in which different areas of this value chain. Right, and, and this is super important to think about because when we want blockchain to be able to streamline business processes, we're essentially saying, we want to streamline all of our activities from support and primary. We want to make them real time. If we have multiple businesses that are, that are operating together, they can even be internal, right? You can have, you know, for example, 60 different, you know, offices spread across, spread across the globe that are, you know, doing some sort of, you know, uh, internal business process and you find out that you're just sending each other Excel documents, well, there's, there's, probably, there's probably a way that we can bring everything on one ledger and streamline things together. So with that in mind, you know, when, when we take a look at what Microsoft Azure is doing in the space, um, you know, the, the CTO for Microsoft Azure is saying that every single company we talk to is looking at how they can apply blockchain to various areas. And the various areas are this, you know, if I, if I just go back two slides, we're talking about these supporting activities and primary activities. Okay, so let's go forward. And just for those that may not know what Microsoft Azure is, really quickly, it's a set of on-demand cloud offerings, really help your organization meet your business challenges. Um, so they provide, they provide solutions from, you know, AI, analytics, you know, computing, media, you know, you name it, they provide it. Um, the difference is Azure is like driving a taxi. You only pay for what you use as opposed to something like, you know, you're probably familiar with Microsoft Office, you pay a monthly or a yearly license. So what is Microsoft doing in the blockchain space is, is, is a question that we get often. So Microsoft has two main offerings. They have this Microsoft Azure Blockchain as a Service, the BAS model, as we like to call it, or they have the Microsoft Azure Blockchain Workbench, and I highlighted this because for the demo, we'll be using the Azure Blockchain Workbench. Um, so the Microsoft Azure Blockchain as a Service, what it provides, you, you know, typically before this type of blockchain as a service, if you wanted to go ahead and build a blockchain network, you would literally need to piece every piece of the blockchain network together. All the different nodes, all the different connections, all the different, uh, you know, uh, all the different components. What Microsoft Azure said is, hey, let's cut down on this development time. And let's go ahead and create these templates with some of the most popular and, and well, you know, spoke about blockchain networks out there. So they have 
the private version of Ethereum with one-click deployment, and you can add, you know, a number of nodes to that network. They have a Hyperledger Fabric that was just updated to 1.3, the, the uh, solution, solution template. They have Corda, they have Quorum, um, but then they also have this Microsoft Azure Blockchain Workbench which gives you out of the box a fully functional uh, blockchain solution that has a user interface that has APIs ready to connect and integrate to whatever device that you're looking for. So just from a development perspective, you know, let's say that you're hiring an organization to go ahead and help you out with this. Uh, you cut down that time on trying to scaffold these blockchain networks together and you can just deploy the network and then just worry about the rest of the integration involved. Okay, so um, along with that, we have the uh, Microsoft Azure Blockchain Development Kit. This is just a quick little video showing you. So this is something that uh, the Microsoft Blockchain Engineering Team released, I would say about a month or two ago. Um, and it's a GitHub repository with a ton of samples to really get going and understand what's, what's, what's happening in the space. So um, as you can see that they have different uh, repositories with samples on how to connect and, and, and how to accelerate. There's different DevOps practices, IoT samples, et cetera. Um, and we're actually going to be focusing on this Microsoft Azure Blockchain Dev Kit uh, for, for, the, uh, for, for the rest of the time. And the demo that we're gonna be showing you, it's, it's also, you know, they, they provide a really nice user interface that's, that's integrated out of the box with the workbench. It's really great for POC purposes and kind of showcasing different things. Um, so, so the scenario that they like to follow when we're showcasing this is, so, you know, just to kind of get an understanding of how an end-to-end -end blockchain solution could look like, Right, we have this scenario where um, we have uh, someone in a supply chain, um, you know, process where you're cultivating coffee beans. Right, you have someone in a field somewhere in a third world country cultivating coffee beans. You need to be able to transfer that into a manufacturing place so that it can get processed. Once it gets processed, you need to be able to transfer it to a logistics uh, transportation uh, process. So, you know, what's important when we talk about that is not only is the transportation important, but also making sure that when it gets delivered to the retail location, um, you know, the product within this, uh, within this transportation, uh, you know, process didn't get ruined, didn't get, you know, tarnished, didn't get tampered with. Um, so, so there's all these different uh, pieces, which eventually then, you know, leads from, as they say, from the farm to the cup, right? So um, it's this whole process of having all these different business partners that don't normally work together, but they should work together. And they're not normally on one process, but they should be on one process. They don't normally use one solution, but they should. This is how you can kind of bring everyone together utilizing blockchain technology, right? So um, what's, what's, uh, what's super important to think about here is while this is one scenario, uh, you're probably sitting here thinking, well, where does it make sense, right? So, so we're gonna break down every one of these components to showcase how things could look like for your own use case, but we're gonna keep this, uh, this supply chain and transportation um, you, you know, we're, we're going to kind of stick to here. So the first one is connecting, right? So, um, you know, there's, there's, there's all sorts of ways that uh, you can use SMS and voice interfaces to trigger a next state of your smart contract. So once again, smart contract is the blockchain application. And when I give you the demo, it, you know, I'm going to show you how these different state changes are and how they look like. But if you're business process oriented, right, and you kind of close your eyes and visualize, you know, different states, you know, you kind of think of this like a flow chart, right? Step one is you cultivate the beans, right? That's number one. And when it's shipped, maybe that's step two. That's what we mean by state changes. So why is this important? It's because when, when you know, when you're in a third world country, for example, you may not have 
all of the technology available to you as if we do over here in New York City and, you know, Boston, and LA and Chicago or places like Paris or, you know, you know, like, like major, major, you know, major places where technology is free. However, it's still important to know that there's ways that certain, you know, you can interact with blockchain technology without actually, you know, without actually having the, the latest and the greatest technology, right? So, um, so, what, so what Microsoft can provide, and this doesn't necessarily have to be Microsoft, but we're gonna focus over here, is these integration capabilities. So, you know, we're gonna take a, we're gonna talk a lot about Logic Apps. But Logic Apps essentially is, um, you know, it's similar to if you were to create a rule in Outlook. If this happens, then that happens. So Microsoft has this integration with Twilio, which is a really neat phone messaging application. And if you take a look at this flow, I mean, there's, you know, there, there may be some technical jargon that's written here, but essentially you can connect these devices that says when an HTTP request is received, that's basically a message, a text message, right? A text message is sent. This, uh, this software called Twilio picks it up and it sends an HTTP request. It could be from anywhere. And then, it, you know, then, then you get the user chain ID. It triggers the next action, triggers the next action, triggers the next action, and it forms a response, right? So you don't technically need to have the latest and greatest. You just need someone somewhere to be able to set this up. Once it's set up, then, then you should be all ready to go. Right, so then there's also IoT devices. And, and IoT, I mean, IoT is just fun to talk about because we now live in a world of connected devices. Literally, everything that, everything that, that we have, you know, I'm looking at my laptop in front of me and to the left of me, I have a smartphone. And then, you know, and I see that there's clocks and there's temperature gauges, you know, fire alarms, everywhere I, everywhere I look, there's some sort of device that could be a smart device, right? And now we have this IoT ecosystem. Um, and, and essentially these are devices that deliver sensor data, right? And it could track different conditions and it can, you know, uh, make, certain, make, make certain triggers happen when certain parameters are, are met, right? And, and let me give you an example. So for example, let's say that we have a truck that's transporting these coffee beans that we have been discussing, right? So uh, what's interesting is that there's so many different IoT devices that could help out in this scenario. For example, we start in the front in the passenger seat. You have an ID badge. This ID badge could be equipped with all sorts of RFID devices. Um, there is this use case that uh, we were working on. Uh, it's a proof of concept that basically uh, with a bank, that wanted to put different IDs on blockchain technology um, and using something called Azure Face, which is a facial recognition because this is a money truck, an armored car that came and picked up money, right? So you don't wanna just hand the money off to anyone. You wanna be able to hand the money off to whoever has the authority to pick up that money. And same thing with these coffee beans, right? So if, if this person isn't authorized to pick up these coffee beans, you don't want to let go of your inventory because that's money right there. So theoretically, you can have this, uh, you know, you can have this, uh, uh, you know, this, this ID card that you can, you know, swipe. And, and as soon as you get into a certain proximity or you swipe it or whatever the case is or your GPS coordinates, it triggers the state change. Same thing with the temperature gauge. So you see that there's a temperature and there's also a humidity. There's also a little GPS indicator. Uh, so for example, you enter a different zone and you set your parameters and I'm gonna show you in this in the demo. I'm gonna actually show you how, how this could potentially look, right? And we have these uh, different temperature gauges. So when, well, you know, let's say you're transporting ice cream or, you know, let's say with the coffee example, right? You wanna keep it frozen. So you wanna set your parameters. If the temperature gets too hot, the retail, area is not going to accept it because it's just been tampered goods and it turns into, you know, it turns into something that can be um, a safety hazard risk. Same thing with humidity. And then, you know, you can also have IOT sensors such as uh, different type of um, sealing devices. So to make sure that packages have never been tampered with 
or maybe that the vehicle is completely closed, right? It should reach a certain sensor. So these kind of devices can be integrated and there's this IoT central. Again, this is all part of Microsoft Azure and they're all integrated with these different blockchain ledgers. So we can configure our different telemetry rules and when we configure them and deploy them to the smart contracts, these smart contracts are, are now written to the blockchain and saying, hey, look, when the temperature gets too big, it's out of compliance. It's no good. Going on to the next area, we have mobile clients. And mobile clients is, is, is interesting because, you know, you may, you know, you may not want actual devices, you know, to uh, like, like, you know, you can kind of consider a mobile client kind of like part of the IoT ecosystem. But let's say that it's just a GPS coordination, which is just, uh, you know, set up in the vehicle, in the transportation. It doesn't have to be vehicles per se, but in this situation it is, right? So when you reach a certain, you know, GPS coordinate, you know, uh, GPS coordinate, then it triggers an event change. Let's say that, you know, we, we have approached the, uh, the client territory, for example. Right? And you can use this for tracking purposes. We'll show you where, where this could really help out when, when, we give the, uh, when we give the demo. So just stay with us over here. But for example, you know, we have the manufacturer, it's in route going to the retailer. Again, this is where you can, you know, this is where you can showcase, you know, real time uh, transportation. So now this is where we talk about backend systems and data and connecting. And, and this is just so interesting because, you know, we always talk about developing new user interfaces and new applications. But what if you don't want to develop a new user interface? What if you're perfectly fine with using the ERP system of your choice? Or you're perfectly fine using the CRM system of your choice or, or, or you're using a different financial system of your choice, like, you know, SAP or something like that. Right, so, so there's, there's all these methods that you can use the APIs, right? You, you can use the APIs from, from the, from, from the uh, backend systems. And now you use that to trigger different you know, state changes within the smart contract application. Not only state changes, but you can also write information from that backend system. Remember, we're talking about data sources. So let's say that we have some sort of system doing a financial reconciliation. We could integrate that particular API with the smart contracts, and now you don't need to reconcile everything because it's all in one ledger. And if it matches, then it matches. This is just kind of quickly, quickly discussing this, this sort of use case. But at the end of the day, you, know, you don't need to redefine the wheel if the wheel's already there for you. All you need to do is integrate it. And what's more important about this scenario is that, you know, when you're from a POC perspective, you don't actually need to put a lot of time into development of that. As I'm going to show you, you can simulate certain devices. So in the, um, in, in the proof of concept that I'm going to show you, we're obviously, you know, I'm not scanning anything with an RFID device. and We obviously are, are not transporting anything from Sydney to New York City. You know, I'm just sitting here, you know, in the office. Uh, but we're simulating this. And as long as you can prove out the value in the first proof of concept, then, 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 you, get, then you get the excitement and you get the interest. And then we could take it to phase two. But essentially, you know, it's, it's, it's up to everyone how, how they decide to do it. But the most important thing to note is that backend systems can absolutely be integrated. Bots and assistants. Now, now this is super interesting because... What, what Microsoft has done is stepping out of this I'm Microsoft and only Microsoft type of world. There's, there's all sorts of integration that come with Cortana, Skype, Microsoft Teams, Google Assistant, Google Voice, Alexa, you know, with the Amazon services. So you can use, you know, you can use these different bots and assistants and chats uh, and use your natural language to write information to the, uh, you know, to write to the blockchain, to write through the smart contracts. And you can use that to say, you know, package delivered, you know, package received, inventory reconciled, you know, uh, this happened, something like that. So 
um, again, it's taking the APIs from these sort of bots and writing them in. And connecting web clients. So we're going to showcase the web client, but essentially, you know, how do you deal with blockchain? Well, you need some sort of user interface, and we're going to get into that. There's this uh, on-chain versus off-chain conversation. So one of the ways that we talk about on-chain and off-chain is not everything is meant for blockchain. And essentially, blockchain is really just for strings of information, numbers, characters, text. So if you're dealing with media, you're dealing with documents, what you really want to do is you want to hash this document, save it somewhere else, but then write that hash of the document to the actual, uh, to the blockchain ledger. So for those that have never seen a hash in action, this is, this is a quick video showing uh, this, uh, this algorithm SHA-256 hash function. And you can see that I'm writing information and you see that it ends in BA2C, right? So it's a whole string of characters. And it'll always stay encrypted like that. Second that I go ahead and take a number away, change it from the eight to the seven, you see it's a brand new number. So, so what's interesting to think about is that this information about document and the metadata, it can all be encrypted and it's basically a digital thumbprint of what that is. You know, even something as simple as a different space or a period will change that entire encryption function. So why is that important? It's because now we can integrate these different documents and media using SharePoint, using Adobe Cloud, using uh, Azure, using um, Azure Storage, Google, OneDrive, Box, FTP, file storage, right? And there's, and there's all sorts of different in, in, you know, integration samples to really get you moving and really cut down on that integration cost. Um, so when we interact with the smart contract, you can see that there's different components involved. We have line of business applications, we have IoT devices, we have documents and media. And just to show you just some of the, you know, integration capabilities that come out of the box with Logic Apps, I mean, there's just ton, you know, you can, you can just see with your eyes how, how many different applications it comes, you know, integrated with. Um, you know, and, and that's just what comes out of the box. You can always use custom APIs to really take it a step further. Um, what's also interesting to note is right now Logic App supports Ethereum, uh, the private Ethereum consortium. However, there's more, you know, more ledgers are going to be supported in the future. So, so that's just with the uh, Logic App integrated with Ethereum. However, Hyperledger and Corda and Quorum could also be integrated, but they would just have to be custom APIs. All right, so, so for the next 10 minutes or so, I'm just going to go ahead and flash this demo. Again, this is going to be a demonstration of this custom UI sample, which has been brought to you by the Microsoft Blockchain Engineering Team uh, from the Microsoft Blockchain Development uh, Kit. Uh, we're also using the Microsoft Azure Blockchain Workbench as the uh, admin tool. And let's show you what that looks like. So here's just a split screen. And let's just see what we, uh, let's talk about what we see. On the right hand side is the Microsoft Blockchain Workbench. You see that it's this UI brought to you by Microsoft. Um, it's a fully responsive design. I'm just showcasing it, uh, you know, in this side, side by side, just so we can see what's going on in the back end with the admin function and also in the user interface that you, you can see, you know, you can put your own company name on here, change icons, but obviously, you know, this is just one example of a front end, uh, you know, user interfaces can always be configured and custom. So we're going to see that we have these applications. These are these smart contracts. This is literally the smart contract that's deployed to the blockchain network. So if I click into the workbench and I click into coffee, you can see that here's all the different contracts, the smart contracts. See, we have contracts here. So for example, it keeps this information. This is all one ledger. And we have all the different network participants. Now for purpose of this demo, I'm gonna make myself all different, you know, all different members and participants, just so I don't have to sign out and sign back in. So for example, I'm the initiating counterparty. I'm a counterparty. I'm also a device. I'm also an IoT scanning chip. I'm also the owner. I'm also the observer. And I also just have 
Jason Panzis, uh, who's also the counterparty, because I'm gonna have to transfer responsibility at some point in time. So what we also see, see we have our shipments and we also have this over here that we could see shipment A, B, C, D, same thing over here. So if I go into shipment D, you know, that we could see the different state changes, what we were talking about. Something's created, something's in transit. So let's go through and, and let's see what something like this would look like in real time. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a new contract. So essentially, I'm gonna call this, so we're gonna call this shipment E. Okay, we're shipping something, we're gonna call it shipment E. I'm gonna set up my device. This is a device, this is an owner, and again, everything is authenticated to Azure Active Directory. Now here's how we can set up our parameters of these IoT devices. So let's say that the minimum humidity that our smart contract is gonna allow, we, we, have, we have SLAs, we have agreements that I don't want this to go below negative 10 degrees or negative 10 humidity. I also don't want it to go above 10 humidity. And temperature, I don't want this to go minus 10 degrees and I also don't want this to go above 10 degrees. And I'm gonna go ahead and create this contract. Okay, so now it's writing to the blockchain ledger. It's gonna initiate this contract. And if everything goes well, as it should, you see now the contract was successfully created. So I'm gonna click into this contract and we could see that it action was just called. I'm on state one. We can see some of the things which is happening. So it's created by this person, created on this date, contract ID is this. And you see that we start to have some of these, uh, you know, blockchain-y type of uh, hashes. Here's the address of the contract. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll explain what all that is in, in a later session. Uh, here's your sensor readings. Again, it's just at the beginning and here's our activity. Okay, so if I'll go ahead and refresh this, we should see that shipment E now comes up. And now let's see what we, you know, let's talk about what we see. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out and here's the map of the world. We don't know where we're at right now, but at least we know that we are right now at the status created. We know our telemetry ingestion. Again, this is the UI and it's reading APIs are coming from the workbench feeding this user interface. And again, this is the admin section. If you don't, you know, you can flip to the consumer section. Maybe you only want your consumers to see your activity feed and not your telemetry ingestion. All this could be developed in this sort of application layer. So we'll go ahead and take an action. And for example, let's go ahead and let's, uh, you know, let's go ahead and ingest the telemetry. Let's say that I just, I just cultivated the beans. I got it. I'm about to transfer it to the manufacturing plant. And let's say now I'm gonna take the action and let's say for the humidity, it's gonna be zero, temperature is gonna be zero and uh, timestamp, I'll just write down 253. Again, in a real life environment, this would automatically update from this telemetry device. We're just manually doing it again, just to showcase what can be done. So here it is, I just took an action action was created successfully, I'll go ahead and refresh the UI. And you can see right here that now the current degree is zero, zero, okay? So we'll go ahead now, take an action, and I'm gonna transfer the responsibility. I'm gonna take the action, and I'm gonna transfer the responsibility over to Jason, because Jason now just picked it up. Again, we're, we're, we're manually doing this. Okay, this could be this transfer of responsibility could be, remember we we're talking about the mobile devices. It's uh, equipped with the GPS coordinate. Uh, Jason drives the truck to the field. Uh, the field has this uh, GPS coordinate set up. There it is. He just, you know, he just picked it up. Um, you know, and I go ahead and refresh this and you can see that now, um, you know, this sort of activity feed was just written over here as well. Now, if we want, what we could do now is update the location. Like I gotta manually put it in. I have the coordinates on my second screen. So let's say the latitude is minus 33.865143, and the longitude is gonna be 151.209900, 
And uh, I don't know, for purpose of timestamp, we'll call it 255. We'll go ahead and take the action. Again, this could be set up through IoT sensors. This could be set up you know, automatically. It doesn't necessarily have to be manual like this, right? Again, I just have to re reiterate this because this is, this is all that we see. So I'll go ahead and refresh this page. And now you can see that the coordinates I just put in was Sydney, Australia. So this is where it was just picked up. This is the last lot, latitude and longitude, right? And the shipment has just picked up here. We just got this telemetry ingestion. And let's say that, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna keep on propagating. Every five minutes, we're gonna check the new telemetry, check the new telemetry, et cetera. Now let's say that the shipment has happened. We're gonna update the location. I'm gonna go ahead and take the action. And I'm gonna put in the new latitude. Let's say it's 40.730610. And the longitude is gonna be minus 73.935242. And again, timestamp. Let's say that this just happened at 256. I'll go ahead and take this action. And there it is. Action was created successfully. I'll go ahead and refresh this page. And you can see that now the shipment has been sent from Sydney to Australia. Or sorry, from Sydney to New York. Okay, we can go ahead and take an action. And let's go ahead and uh, you know ingest the telemetry. Let's say that this is happening in transit. We'll go ahead and take the action. Let's say the humidity rose a little bit to four. Let's say the temperature rose a little bit to, you know, nine. Let's do the timestamp. What do we have right here? 257. And I'll go ahead and take the action. Okay, we'll go ahead. I'll wait for it to write. Action created successfully. I'll go ahead and refresh this. And you can see that we're still within our parameters, right? Nine, so therefore, you know, it doesn't need to, it doesn't need to cancel, it's, it's in transit. Um, you know, it just if I were to take an action and ingest the telemetry and make it outside of the properties, it would cancel. It would cancel the entire order. But for purposes of this, let's say that somebody signed for the package, it would then trigger the completion. We'll go ahead and mark it complete. And you could see that that's it, it's completed. So our shipment was picked up in this area, in Sydney, was uh, transported all the way through New York City. You could see that the contents of the package haven't been tampered with, haven't, you know, fell out of our parameters. Everybody involved had full visibility into all of this in real time. And, uh, you know, now we know that we could trust that the package has never been tampered with. We could trust that it came when it came and where it was, where it was. If there was any delays, we knew where everything was. So, you know, that's just one way that we can demo and showcase how you can integrate and connect and interact with different blockchain technology uh, using, you know, IoT devices, using different, uh, you know, smart contracts, um, you know, and uh, different, different uh, integration solutions. All right, again, well, we thank everyone for coming out and uh, we hope to see you next month. Thank you so much and have a great day.